Scary Movie Clubcast. Live from the clubhouse, it's the Scary Movie Clubcast. This is Amanda. And this is Nadine. And tonight we watched Attack the Block. Yes. Nadine's going to give us a little summary, because I bet most of you have never heard of it or seen it. Yeah. Uh, So, essentially, it starts out with a woman in... London, whatever day it is, it's a day when lots of fireworks are being used. Everyone's using fireworks. She's walking down this sketchy neighborhood and these like five or six kids who are about 15-ish rob her (laughs) and then something falls out of the sky and crashes into this car and it turns out to be an alien that attacks one of the kids and while this is happening she runs away (laughs) and then the kids go after the alien and everything we see is like their adventures merging back together and Mm -hmm. big old alien attack on London. And then I have our fun facts for the movie. So the holiday it is, it's Sky Fox Day and and it's set in South London. According to what I read, this is part of Quentin Tarantino's 10 Best Films of 2011. And it is the feature film debut of director Joe Cornish. This is the first time he directed something, but he's written since for movies like Ant-Man and The Adventures of Tintin, parts in Shaun of the Dead. And this is also the film debut of Alex Ismail. I'm pretty sure that's the guy who plays Finn in... Mm-hmm. It is. In the new Star Wars movies. Much more likable character. (laughs) Yes. So these are my pre-productions and the research that the director and writer did, Joe Cornish. So he he got the idea from watching the movie, the 2002 movie Signs. Mm -hmm. And imagine what would happen if it took place in South London. Which is, I think, was funny because he makes a joke of like, do you really think water's going to stop these things to the little kids that have the water, water gun? Yeah. And that's how they fight the monsters in Signs. And so Joe also based the character brew wise on himself uh when he was in his 20s i think that is the that random guy who just was stoned the whole time oh and so when he was doing his research joe cornish he interviewed various kids in youth groups in order to find out what kind of weapons they would use if an alien invasion occurred someone said samurai sword (laughs) probably if they had it displayed on their wall like that and he also while talking to the kids he asked one girl what would you think of this creature if you found it. Speaking of that, like, the first alien that they find. The girl said, I wouldn't touch it. I don't want to get chlamydia. And that quote was in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And the director also wanted to use mostly unknown kids who were involved in drama club and otherwise demonstrated interest in acting. He had over 1,500 young people audition for parts, like, multiple times to kind of show, like, that they really wanted it and had the discipline to, like, show up and do what needed to be done and everything and learn the lines. And during the process they of learning their lines, they also did improv. And after casting, the last two drafts Cornish wrote were influenced by the actors, letting them go through the dialogue and discuss any changes they wanted. And also the aliens in the movie, their designs are based on pictures from the Space Invader arcade cabinets. And it's like exactly what the monsters look like, basically. And are also inspired by the wolf from 300 and ring race from Lord of the Rings and the video game Another World. Gorilla wolf looking things. Yep. Gorilla wolf looking things. Uh, These are the production and post-production facts. The filmmakers, this is something I like, is that they only use CGI when they felt it was absolutely necessary to enhance a particular effect. So most of the creatures are either um, puppets or actors in suits. It makes the guy being like, oh, a puppet. Funnier. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Because <laughs> it, it was. And because they use mostly practical effects, like, it was more real for the actors, and so they were even, like, a little creeped out by it, and, like, seeing the actors in the suits, like, walking around. Definitely easier to be afraid of that than it is a tennis ball on yes. a broomstick. Yes, yes, And so apparently what the director did was he, the it, like, the areas that they were, like, running around in, um, if you were able to catch some of the names of street signs, are apparently named after well-known British science fiction authors. Like, there was Moore Court for Alan Moore, Huxley Court for Aldous Huxley, and Wells Court for H.G. Wells. Oh, and so in the scene where the meteorite breaks open and the female alien cocoon is revealed, um, the director Joe Cornish 
expressed a wish for keeping that prop in as a garden decoration. Oh, I thought this is so stupid. So after a screening by Sony Pictures in Toronto uh, to determine whether they should release the film in North America, Ron Sparks recommended they change its title to Space Bears or Space Gremlins to attract the larger audience. The best part to me is, what it? No. Like, well, I don't know. People are what they are. I could... <laughs> yes. I feel like you'd be, like, going to see that and expecting to see, like, like a really, really terrible B-movie. Like, Gremlin. Well, not, I like, mean... Gremlins, but, like, Trolls or something. Like, that level bad. Yeah. Every part of it's bad. The production, the acting, the script, the effects. Those are all my facts I thought were interesting. Nice, nice. I just think it's depressing because I was excited about this movie. It's always the worst when you're excited for one and then you're like, mm-mm didn't like it yeah i i don't know i was expecting the characters to like have more of a re redeemable quality like to be more likable so this way we would side with them and you know you're not just banking on the fact that we're hoping that the humans went over the aliens cause yeah i don't i don't care <laughs> what they were doing i think that they were um thinking that it would be a lot easier for us to care about them because they're kids and so we would just excuse this bad behavior as mm -hmm. like childish indiscretions but i'm sorry but holding a woman up at knife point is not a childish indiscretion to me i'm not okay no. with it yeah. maybe it's because i'm a woman but like i'm not on your side i literally don't care what happens to you Especially in the story Moses is like the biggest 15 year old and there's six ever. of them yeah and honestly just a regular 15 year old could probably take most women like it, it like yeah, they were not very likable. Yeah, no. They just kept doing the dumbest stuff, too. Yeah, and I think it's just... I think we're just not the target audience for it. I'm sure maybe if we were a couple of dumb guys, we would have loved this movie just simply yeah. for the action and excitement and dumb jokes and stuff. But yeah, maybe. Because, like, some of the jokes were fine. Like, yeah. I definitely giggled at certain points, but I wasn't, like, hardcore yeah, laughing or no. anything at any point. No, this was not, like, a promising young woman. Yes. Or even Jeepers some, Creepers. Yes. Some of them <laughs> Jeepers Creepers. I was really laughing. <laughs> Man, so scares. Probably the only thing that was even vaguely scary to me was the very first jump scare when, mm -hmm. like, the alien, I guess, is in the glove box. Like, I don't yeah. even understand. I don't even know where it came from. <laughs> but either way, I was like, oh. <laughs> but that was it. Yeah. It definitely watches more like an action movie than a horror movie, for sure. Yeah. I don't know, other than just the idea of being a woman walking around the streets and a gang of teenagers, that's pretty terrifying. Although, also, I, I guess because it's written by a man, I feel like most women would know that if you were walking into something that you already didn't feel comfortable with, you would not hang up the phone. Like, that's just not a thing. I feel like it, maybe it's, like, even just instinctual for women that we would be like, oh, hang on, stay on the phone with me for a minute. Or at the mm -hmm. very least, we'd protect. Yeah. So we're hanging up as she's walking into that. I, I know. Very she, unlikely. Yeah, like, literally sees this group of teenage boys who are all, like, hooded and masked, and she's like, oh, uh, sorry, gotta go. If anything, you just call the police and be like, um, I'm just scared. <laughs> and they're these teenagers. Yeah. I mean, mostly I would just call, like, either my best friend or my mom or something. Yeah. But honestly, I would also just even pretend to be on the phone. I mean, not scary. No, not scary. Laughs. I found the samurai sword in general to be very funny, <laughs> like, the whole time. Like, even just when he first grabbed it, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and then when he gets it stuck in the wall. Oh, that was good. So good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really liked the part where it was like, what, you really think water's gonna work against him? Because just knowing the facts, I was like, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. I don't know. Those kids were just... They're just so dumb. They're just dumb teenagers. Those little boys, though, were adorable. I mean, I guess, because they're so young. But honestly, it's just depressing because yeah, they're is. just trying to model after this other stupid behavior. And so it's just like, oh. They're just going to grow to me just like those <laughs> oh, limbs. Oh, gosh. Like, the worst. Very upsetting. And then also, I feel like when, when Moses was being given the drugs and being, like, pulled in as, like, a drug dealer, mm -hmm. it's like they were playing, like, this sinister music and it was supposed to be, like, this big deal moment. And I was like, I already watched this kid mug somebody. Like, I know. I, that's not scary. And like that, going back to scary parts, it's like the part where she's like, they want her ring that's not worth anything and she's struggling to get it off. Like, that's where so many people get like, when you can't like do what these violent people are asking you to do, that's when you're, it's like the scariest part. Also, I can tell you just by looking at that ring that it is pretty worthless. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it was so thin and small. Yeah, it didn't have any gemstones or anything on it. Well, yeah, but oftentimes they don't even pay for the gemstones. So, I mean, that part yeah. isn't so much, but, like, I, I doubt that it was even real gold. Yeah, it didn't no. look like it. But even if it were real gold, the weight on that, you'd probably get, like, literally $20 at a pawn shop at the most. And the fact that they weren't going to give it back to her, oh, those kids were not likable. Not in any way. Like, it was... 
they didn't redeem themselves in any way. Moses is a hero. No, he's not. Blew up the whole apartment building while people were still inside. I know. That was the crazy thing to me. When she put the gas on, I was like, this is a public safety issue. You just put everyone's lives in danger in this building. Like, the fire's going to rage out of control. I don't care how fast the firefighters get there. Did we have any favorite parts, you think? Long pause. I mean, I don't know if this is a favorite part, but I like the fact that there wasn't, like, a lot of detail to the monster. Because I feel like they were kind of, like, weird to begin with. And, like, if you would put more detail in them, I would have been like, this is even stupider than it already was. I liked it when Moses was being arrested. He Obviously, it didn't work out very well, but I was pretty hyped watching those cuffs be put off. I was so sad when that little puppy died. It was so, what was even the point of that? I don't know. Maybe they were like, you're gonna care about this dog because it hasn't done anything wrong no, yet. No, it's just a little baby puppy. You needed to go out for a walk. Those kids were just kids. One of them whined straight to his mama's face about how he's gonna be back in 10 minutes for dinner. They were hot messes also those little kids where are your parents because you're so little to still be out here and how do you have access to gasoline also that little cap gun that one kid had was very dangerous if it looked like a real gun like that that's how you get shot by a cop yeah it is min and i also talked about while we were watching it when the one guy wanted to jump that stupid jump from one side of like the tall thing to the other and then how his friends like told him not to and pulled him down we were like that's unlikely <laughs> inaccurate <laughs> with this dumb group of they boys. would definitely be egging him on to do it and then he would do it and like twist or break his ankle on yeah the at best <laughs> yes. like at best if he makes it kids are stupid you just mug someone you're gonna go run around town when you mug someone so close to where you live <laughs> mug someone so close to where you live and it's like not a great neighborhood and you're expecting to like get money from them like I know, he's like, you always pick the poor one. You're in the wrong neighborhood if you're trying to pick the rich ones. I know, and it was also crazy that, like, I mean, that girl had bad luck to begin with. They break into her house. Everyone in this was having a very bad day. It was a very terrible bad day. <laughs> oh, man, one of the other funny parts, have we done laughs already? Yeah, we did. Uh, was when the guy from Shaun of the Dead, like, peeks his little head out, and he's like, is this thing? And she's like, mm -mm. And he's like, okay. And, like, closes the door. <laughs> That was good. Yeah. One of the other facts I saw is apparently his hair is long because he just came off filming the movie Paul, which is another alien movie. Oh. Except it takes place in uh, the United States and him and Simon Pegg are road tripping in an RV and then they find an alien named Paul, voiced by Seth Rogen. It was actually a fun, it was actually a fun movie, a better movie than this. Mm. Plot quality story. Uh, Did we do least favorite parts? I feel like we've been talking about our least favorite parts the whole time, but I do think I did skip it. Probably my least favorite part was when they broke into her apartment. I was like, great, she can't feel safe anywhere. I Lovely. know, and then they demand her help and yeah. don't even see, like, how mugging her was wrong. I was also very annoyed when she came out of the bedroom holding the guitar, like, as if it was a weapon. I was, like, against five, like, basically grown men. I mean, yeah, they're kids, but they're 15 years old. Is there no window in your bedroom? It's on the ground floor. Get out of there. I know. So then maybe again, it has bar, but then it's a fire hazard. It has bars on it. And she can't open it. I didn't even see a window, though, which I thought was very odd. There must be a window, because I know there has to be a window for them to, like, classify it as a bedroom. Just the fact that, the, like, they didn't have us, like, grow to, like, like or understand where the kids were coming from. It was just, like, it's just like, no, we're just going to do this action movie, and it's, it's just whatever. Like, they didn't, there was no, like, real substance to the characters. Like, they, like, I don't know, I guess they kind of tried, like, when he gives that, like, weird speech about how, like underprivileged their neighborhood is and everything and how everyone's up to get them but like it was too little too late at that point like give me a reason to care one well, him being like we were just as scared as you were it was just dumb so plot quality bad <laughs> yeah it was just weak there was no there wasn't any depth to it it's just like i feel like someone in there wanted there to be like i mean the whole idea of like setting an alien invasion in it's like south london where it's supposed to be like these kids who are underprivileged there should have been more but there wasn't uh, yeah, it was just like action for action sake, and yeah. it wasn't. I I can't care about the action that's happening if I don't care about the characters. Yeah, I just kept thinking that the whole time. Like when they got into the car crash with the police van, which yeah, which is weird. <laughs> another thing, the police van, and then crashed into the drug dealer's car. I was like, I don't care. Like I literally, I just kept thinking that the whole time. I don't care what happens. Also, that like hi hat that that drug dealer guy who was like the violent one. He was supposed to be, like, an, like, another villain in addition to the aliens. And, like, they made a point of him being the only one to, like, have, like, a real gun. Whereas the kids only had, like, pipes and a, a weird samurai sword and a chain. But he didn't really feel like that much of a villain compared to what they were, like, I don't... 
Yeah. Like, a little bit, I guess, because he has the gun. But, like, that's really the only difference in his violent nature and theirs. I know, they're just going to grow up to become him, and that's sad. Basically, that's what you get to see with, like, the little kids, the teenagers, and him is, like, the different stages. Yeah, it's very it depressing. Starts. Recent graduate of nursing school has to live in this neighborhood where she gets mugged. I guess it was vaguely funny when the guy tried to hit on her. <laughs> yeah, that one kid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't say overall, just, like, pretty disappointing, because, like, yes. I've heard, like, only good things about it and then i watched it and i was like what did you hear that from anyone specific i just read stuff about it i don't know anyone who's watched it other than the two of us i will say like in defense of tarantino it being on a top 10 list for that year i'm like only so many movies come out in a year yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean if i was a dude or a bro i would like it a lot more probably probably wouldn't care just poorly done yeah. not translate to us <laughs> also i feel like guy who we would recognize from Shaun of the dead should have explained his relationship because he seemed so out of place like i really felt i was like you do not look like you belong in this group i mean he seems like his character is just very similar to james franco from pineapple express oh i haven't seen that movie that's not my jam <laughs> i can tell from the preview i was like i'm not even slightly interested in this <laughs> it's a weird one but yeah, it was a very similar character, just like weird nice guy, drug dealer, kind of kind of annoying though at the same time. Oh, something we should have mentioned in favorite parts, those teenage girls, I loved them. I liked it when the girls saved everyone, <laughs> like including the victim woman from the mugging. Yeah. Although I don't know how she did it because they just like showed her putting her hand, I, I assume it had a weapon in it, in the thing's mouth. I was no. like, do you know that we can't see? Indestru indestructible recycling bins oh i know <laughs> that don't even dent also well, there was no paper in there it was like maybe empty. it was trash <laughs> when it just come <laughs> yeah i mean that recycling bin was one of the stars <laughs> they were also bad friends for not caring that he was oh missing oh my gosh we and we talked about that during the movie <laughs> yeah the main difference between men and women and boys and girls boys being chased by murderous aliens one of their friends is not with them anymore they don't care no nope. he calls he's like i've been trying to call you i'm not dead and they're like oh okay girls would have lost their minds they would have been like calling her like crazy i know. like where is she we need to find her and these boys couldn't even be bothered to pick up their phones i know that and was he had minutes so like he was gonna run out of minutes to call them anyone who's out there who's young will not remember this but cell phones used to have minutes and you used to only have a certain amount of minutes that you could call somebody yeah like that would if this was a movie with girls in it that would have been the new plot would be finding their friend mm -hmm. whereas these guys could not care less no they're like oh whatever like right up the end and that was the one who lied to his mom all right one indestruct indestructible recycling bin just one yeah i'm gonna give it one indestructible recycling bin also i don't know a big part of it is just like hearing that it was so good and expecting it to be so good I'm guessing all those critics i heard from are all men yeah must have been <laughs> it did make it much more sad though because we were so excited to watch I it i know it was very disappointing it's already been a disappointing day too because i don't know if our mind hunter episode is before or after this but we thought that we were going to be done recording today and then now we've decided that i'm going to watch the entire series of mind hunter before we were it's okay i'm going to rewatch it because <laughs> i watched the first season when it came out like a million years ago because david finger doesn't do anything quickly all right well we hope you enjoyed that movie more than we did if you watched it you can follow us on facebook instagram and twitter at scary movie clubcast and subscribe to our youtube channel uh and we will see you next movie night don't forget, there are 153 days till Halloween. Bye! Bye! What is this? That's from when he went to the dentist to get his teeth clean. We had to sedate him. Puppy. So they shaved his little oh, arm. You have little black gloves on. <laughs> Poor baby pup. Or just like his, like, his glove just rolled down just a little bit. So it doesn't... It's Poor so cute. Boy. I love it so much. It's fashion. Tell everyone how stylish it is, Peppy. Sweet little angel. He's like, I hate the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what were you going to say? Uh, what were we talking about? Least favorite parts? Oh. Again, I think. No, we no plot quality. quality. <laughs> you don't remember? No. 
It was nothing just coming back to me. Other than, <laughs> what did I? What did I just? You said, said it was just action for action's sake. Yeah, and that, like I just didn't care what happened. You know, when like the police van crashed into the drug dealer's car. Oh yeah, and then <laughs> water comes full of gasoline because <laughs> everyone's got one of those. And whenever we're deciding something to rate it out of, someone will suggest something, and then you will add it to like a full sentence. <laughs> Me up. There are a hundred and I already forgot. Stupid air conditioning. <laughs> Where'd my mouse go? Lost it.